right here I have a fruit that some say could end world hunger. It's spiky, kind of intimidating, and it looks like something that fell off the back of a dragon. But what you were looking at was quite possibly the most underrated life-saving fruit on the planet. Because this thing, it doesn't just grow on trees the size of dinosaurs, but it feeds people like no other fruit really can. In a world that's constantly running out of answers, jackfruit might be one of the last ones left standing. Most fruits are seasonal, and they're kind of high maintenance, but jackfruit kind of just does its own thing. It's the largest tree grown fruit on the entire planet. Each tree can produce up to 200 of these things every year. They don't really need constant attention or chemical boosters to make them grow bigger. Each of the trees can live for decades and each of the fruits can weigh up to 80 pounds. It's like if watermelon and pulled pork had a baby, but that's really just the surface. Jackfruit is native to South and Southeast Asia, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. In those places, it's not some exotic fruit. It's actually been around for thousands of years. In the Philippines, they caramelize it. In places like Kerala, people eat it boiled, dried, pickled. In Indonesia, it ends up in everything from stew to dessert. But outside of those regions, jackfruit has a weird double life. In the West, it's more known as vegan pulled pork in expensive cafes. They usually drain all the latex and remove all the grind around here. They break it apart into shredded chunks, then they saute some garlic and onions, and they toss in some jackfruit with some barbecue sauce. Personally, I think it's one of the greatest vegan inventions, but in parts of the world where people are actually hungry, jackfruit rots on the ground, completely ignored. So, what's really going on? Well, the part that no one really wants to admit, jackfruit's biggest weakness is time. Jackfruit isn't just large, it's particular. It only really grows in the tropics. It needs heat, humidity, rain, but not too much rain. And if it gets cold, even just a little frost, it's game over. The tree gives up like it never wanted to be here in the first place. In other words, jackfruit doesn't really do compromise. It's like that one friend who needs their room exactly 72 degrees with blacked out curtains and a white noise machine just to go to sleep. So even though jackfruit could feed the world, the world kind of has to meet it halfway. And it's not just the climate. It can take up to seven years to fruit. And that's a long time to babysit a plant without a single payoff, especially if you're a subsistence farmer where every season counts. You don't get to play the long game when you plant for dinner and jackfruit knows that and it's not rushing for anybody that's why container gardening and homemade greenhouses are becoming so popular imagine if you could grow a dwarf jackfruit tree on the balcony of your apartment if you could genetically alter it to be able to withstand the cold these of course are just merely ideas but ideas lead to answers to me that's one of the strangest contradictions about this fruit it's one of the most abundant nutrient dense crops on earth but it doesn't make itself easy to grow therefore most farmers just skip it the global jackfruit market was valued at about 250 million dollars in 2023 it's expected to go up to about 450 million dollars by 2030 that's only about a four percent annual rate which is not horrible but it's not that good but it does make perfect sense. Ripe jackfruit spoils fast, and I mean extremely fast. It holds a lot of moisture and it has a delicate texture, so you only have about a week to use it after it's harvested. That's why farmers don't really grow it for profit, they grow it for personal use. They go with things that fruit faster, crops that are easier to sell, or the ones that won't die the second cold front moves through. That's why you never really see them sold whole, only in small plastic wrappings. Even though jackfruit could help solve food insecurity, it doesn't really fit our usual system of production. It's a fruit made for abundance, but not for speed. That makes you wonder though, how did anyone decide to grow this tree in the first place? This is the part that's a bit strange. Even with all those limitations, some people are starting to realize what jackfruit can really do. Nonprofits are starting to plant jackfruit in East Africa where droughts are common and food insecurity is rising. Inspired by a visit to a Tanzanian farm in 2016, he decided to focus on jackfruit locally known as fene. To eat and also something to sustain me in terms of finance. In Uganda, there are schools with jackfruit trees in the schoolyards. One tree can feed entire classrooms, and not just once, but season after season.
when you're cutting jackfruit, it's important to oil up whatever you're using to cut it. It has a latex that's really sticky and it gets all over your tools and it stains your hands. It can get really bad. My father told me that if you rub down your axe with coconut oil, it keeps everything from sticking. And I find that it's best to use a loofah with some oil on it to rub down your tools. So while my family oils down the axe, I wanted to take two seconds to tell you guys about my Patreon. If you want to see the behind the scenes of the videos and learn things about growing, I'm posting all my audio files and journals on Patreon. It's crazy, but I get so many messages and comments these days. So if you want to kind of talk with me, it'd be much easier to do on Patreon. It should be the first link in the description, but now that that's out the way, back to the video. In Bangladesh, jackfruit is actually the national fruit. When the country gained independence in 1971, part of building a new national identity involved choosing symbols tied to the land and culture. And jackfruit was a symbol of generosity and abundance, something that could feed a whole village. During hard times, people there survived off of it, literally. But the part most people ignore is that we're moving into a future where confusion on climate change and human politics is rewriting where and how we can grow food. The crops that we rely on, wheat, rice, soy, they're all really fragile in their own way. They depend on stable seasons and massive infrastructures. But jackfruit, it doesn't need any chemical inputs. It just needs the right place and time and if we're as smart as we think we are we'll start listening to what that actually means because there are places in south america in sub-saharan africa in the tropics of the caribbean where jackfruit could thrive places where kids grow hungry but there's land there's heat there's possibility and maybe that's the point jackfruit isn't just a fruit it's a bet a quiet one a bet that maybe not everything worth planting needs to be fast. That maybe the most powerful things grow slowly and that hunger might just be solved by the things we've ignored the longest. Which is pretty insane.